fighting the battles of your life, the moment you call yourself a child of God, the moment you give your life to Jesus, you are naturally in a battle. And that's because you have chosen sides. If you choose the side of God, you are an enemy of the devil. If you choose the side of the devil, you are an enemy of God. Very simple. So you're in a natural battle and the devil is always looking for those people that he will manipulate, he will use to fight against you. So you see people that you didn't even offend, they will just rise up against you and you'll be wondering why me. There are other times you see people because of your stand for righteousness, you cannot please them. So you are in a battle. The earlier you recognize that, the better for you. I've seen so many believers that are naive, so many righteous people that are not, that are oblivious of the fact that they are in a battle and so they become prey to the devil. The devil is at war with you. You are in a battle and there are four reasons I want to give you today why the devil is fighting you. Number one, it is to distract you. The devil wants to distract your attention. He doesn't like the fact that you are doing well. He doesn't like the fact that you have a vision. He doesn't like the fact that you are going somewhere. He doesn't like the fact that there are many destinies associated with yours that will see the light of the day because he can see that you are doing well. So. For him, the best thing to do is to distract your attention. And it brings petty things your way, it brings battles your ways, believing that with these battles, you will not be focused. I pray for you that every battle set up against your life to distract your attention, to distract you from your destination, may ever destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, number two, sometimes the devil sets up these battles to discourage you. He knows that if you wake in the morning and you meet with a battle, you go out in the day, another battle, you come back in the night, another battle. Uh, even the best among us, battles everywhere, no moment of peace, no moment of, you know, of tranquility and calmness, the best among us could get discouraged. We are always fighting every time and you wake up in the night, you pray. Every morning you pray, you're not even having time for worship, it's just warfare every time. It could take a toll on your joy. So the devil is doing that to discourage you. But I pray for you that you will not fail. You will not be discouraged in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, the devil is doing this to deceive you. You know the Bible calls him a liar. And all he does is to deceive people. He tells them lies. Now the devil wants you to believe that God is no longer interested in you. The devil wants you to believe that he is more powerful than the God you serve. Sometimes we even see people, they say that God is slower than Abelis. God is slower than the devil. That's a lie that the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that you have so offended God and God has quit on your life. Or sometimes he thinks he wants you to believe that the battles of your life are so many and God is tired of you. Ah, why is this guy always praying about battles every time? We just solved one for him. He has started asking for the solution to another one. The devil wants to deceive you. But of God, let me tell you, God is more interested in you than you ever think. He's a loving father and he cannot let go of you just because there are battles in your life. Number four, the devil wants to defeat you. The whole idea is to bring you down, is to make you bow to him, is to make you say, I'm no longer following God, is to make you say, I'm tired of life. And you see, many people that are promising many people, including children of God, have had to commit suicide. People have had to end their own lives because they came to that point in their life, they came to that last point where they said, I can't continue again. So they give in, they give up. May the Lord strengthen you, you will not give up in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes God delivers us before the battles, but sometimes God wants us to go through the battle and then he delivers us in the battle. He wants us to see that even in the battle, he can deliver us. Sometimes he chooses to deliver us before the fire, but just like the Hebrew children, sometimes God waits until we get into the fire before he delivers us. Some of you might be thinking, why is it that I'm passing through there? Why didn't God deliver me before? No, 
That is God's plan. He does that to show his mightiness, his power, his, his control over everything. So he makes you go through stuff and then he delivers you to let your enemy know that they don't have the control, they don't have the power over you. Now, interestingly, it's not every battle that comes your way that you are meant to fight. And even though I'm talking about fighting today, you could have a flight. <laughs> that means you could take a run. Very important, you have to realize this. On Sunday when I was teaching, I was asking that you pray to God for wisdom above your challenges. And that's very important. There are sometimes God just wants you to run away from the battle because it's not necessary. You probably have heard when God told the uh, Israelite to Moses, he said, you will not need to fight in this battle. Just watch what God will do. Anyone that lifted up his sword that day was not in line with the strategy. The strategy was, even though the battle was coming your way, don't fight. Just allow God. Look at God. And God does it. I mean, imagine when Jesus Christ was born. Herod decided he was going to kill Jesus Christ. That was his decision. God could have told Joseph, don't worry, I'm going to deal with Herod. But rather, God told Joseph, take this child and run away from here. Get out of this place. And you'll be asking yourself, was it that God did not have power over Herod? Was it that God didn't have the power to fight that battle? No. For God, and that is his own strategy, we cannot question his wisdom. God just said, no, this is not the battle. I'm going to give you three points why sometimes God does not want you to fight. Number one, sometimes God doesn't want you to fight when he is not with you. We have seen cases where people sin against the Lord. We have seen cases where people are not in the best of their spiritual state. We have seen cases where, permit me to say, their spiritual antenna, their spiritual network is not good. The frequency is not picking well. And God says, if you put your head into a battle this way, you're going to lose. So, one, when God is not with you, you don't want to fight any battle. Listen. The best and the strongest among us is no match for the devil if God is not with us. And you don't want to say like Samson, I'm going to go out and fight like I used to. I'm going to go and the Bible says, and he did not know that power has left him. He did not know that strength had left him. No, Samson, you were not the one winning the battle. It was some thing that God supplied with you that was winning the battle. It, you, you didn't see the power. You didn't see the strength. You didn't see the God in the battle. And that's because God takes the glory behind the scene. He puts you as the front and he comes behind. But every spiritual man must acknowledge that God is behind them. And that's why in John chapter 15, Jesus Christ told his disciples, he said, without me, ye can do nothing. You can't be anything. You can't do anything without God. So when Samson said, I'm going to go out as I used to go out, he didn't know that it was not the same thing. Now he went out, but what used to go out with him was not going out with him. Number one, when God is not with you. When is it that God says do not fight? Number two, when the Lord is around, he's with you, but God is not fighting. There are times God is just saying this not fight. Don't, I'm not fighting, just leave. And you need to realize that when God is not fighting, you don't want to be fighting. When God is fighting, you don't want to be sleeping. Very important. You need to align your agenda with God's agenda. You need to align your purpose with God's purpose. Take it. When God is fighting, you don't want to be sleeping. When God is watching, you don't want to be fighting. Very important. Number three, you don't want to be fighting when the Lord is not yet fighting. Now, the Lord is going to fight. He knows he's going to fight. He's actually just you know, luring the enemy into a place where it's going to beat them blue and black. So God is not fighting yet. Don't start fighting yet. You, it's very important that you realize that. Fight, flight, running is a path of wisdom. It, it's, it's the wisdom path to winning victories. There are sometimes you hear that, you know, the police say, 
anything you say will be used against you in the court of law so it's better you just keep quiet and sometimes you can win a lot of battles by just keeping quiet but let's talk about fighting so yeah you can win by flight but you can win by fighting and it's important that we realize that many times in our lives we're going to need to fight to win in james chapter 4 James chapter 4 look at what the Bible says in verse 7 James chapter 4 verse 7 it says submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you I love the scriptures I got to know about this verse of the Bible very early in my Christian life and I love it so much resist the devil and he will flee from you now the question you should ask yourself is if the devil shows up and you are not resisting what will happen very simple he will not flee from you you're going to be making noise you're going to be shouting but if you are not resisting him if you are not defending your territory if you are not holding the ground over your family over your children the devil will be having a free day he just wants to be playing around you he plays in your house with sickness he plays in your house with ill luck he plays in your house with strange dreams. People are having strange dreams all over the whole place. People sleep in the night, you know, in the, in the, on day one, it is in your room. The next day, it's in another room. Even the children are not left out. They are saying something is knocking their head in their dreams. The devil is playing on your territory. You've got to defend that jurisdiction. Amen. James says, resist the devil. That's how to fight. He doesn't understand grammar. He doesn't understand you know, you joking around and loafing around and making noise. He understands the language of warfare. You say, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I resist you. Pack your load and get out. I'm doing this teaching today because yesterday the Lord spoke to me. I was in an hour of prayer when the Lord spoke to me that there are people that are going through challenges today. There are people who are going through battles in their lives and they are praying the prayers of intercession of supplication they don't know how to do spiritual warfare and so because the devil is not finding resistance within that territory is 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 just plain it's just, and they are crying the devil is happy but now as a believer you've got to realize that you have authority resist the devil and he will flee now sometimes the first day you resist him, some may go, not everything. You have to keep resisting him until eventually he goes away. You remember when he came to tempt Jesus Christ? The first scripture Jesus go, he didn't go. The second scripture, he didn't go. So you, just like Jesus, Jesus insisted. He, 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 he insisted that that territory belongs to him and the devil did not have the right to stay there. He insisted until the devil left. In your life, on your business, in your family, you have to insist until the devil leaves. That is how to fight. In 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, let's see in verses 8 and 9. You saw what James said? Resist the devil. Let's see 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists. Wow! James said it. Peter is saying it too. Peter is saying, resist him. He's like a lion, as a roaring lion. But Peter said, resist him steadfast. Now, James does not add steadfast to it, but Peter said, sometimes just resisting alone will not work. You have to be consistent in your resistance. You have to be consistent in demanding that he takes his leave now. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Amen. The devil knew that you will listen to this today. And so he's already packing his load. 
When it's time to pray, all you've got to do is to ask him to leave. You're going to demand that he leaves. It's not a suggestion. You know, sometimes when believers are praying, <laughs> you'll be hearing things like, Oh God, if it is your will, let the devil pack his load and go. But if it is not your will, I, I will endure it. No, no. You don't endure the devil. There's no such scripture. You resist the devil. It is always the will of God for the devil to pack his load and live your life. Amen. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus Christ says he has given us authority. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, Let's read verses 17 to 19. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 19. And the 70 returned again with joy. They returned with joy. <laughs> Why did they return with joy? They said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. A moment from now, I'll be telling you about some of the weapons of our warfare. But they said here that the weapon we used as we went out was your name. And they said, even the devils were subject to us through thy name. And that gave them a lot of joy. If it gave them a lot of joy then, it can give you a lot of joy today. Imagine what joy can come to your heart. When you realize that the sickness in the life of your son all this while has been because of the devil. And as you resist him and demand that he takes his leave, the moment he leaves, joy comes into your heart. In verse 18 and he said unto them I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven that's the kind of vision you want to see you don't want to see that masquerades are pursuing you in your dream and they are lashing you something is wrong with that territory something is wrong with the spirit permeating in that environment How can you be sleeping a masquerade will be beating you no if there's anybody beating anyone at all <laughs> it must be you beating them. Why? You need to resist. Resist in the morning. Resist in the afternoon. Resist in the night. Say, in the name of Jesus, I resist you, devil. You don't have control over this jurisdiction because the king of kings lives in this house. You are not allowed. You are not welcome in this place. Resist him. So he said, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. And in verse 19, he said, Behold, behold me see. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Oh, hallelujah. I love this say, And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, now listen, listen, listen. I want you to listen to this. There are many of you that are old believers. You've given your life to Jesus 10 years, 7 years, 6 years. And you say, Pastor, all the scriptures you're reading, I know them. But listen, sit down. The Bible says the word of God, they are new every morning. The reason we read them over and over is because sometimes we still know the letter of the scripture, but the spirit of that scripture has evaporated from our heart. I mean, I know the scripture, but imagine the life it just pumped into me when I read now that nothing shall by any means hurt me. This was the way we grew up. You met a scripture, it jumped out of the Bible into your house. You prayed it until a point that even if the devil appears to you physically, you knew that nothing can by any means hurt you. Jesus did not say this to deceive us. He did not give us this to elate us. He did not give us this to just, to, to just, you know, create some euphoria in us. No, he said this because he meant it. And every time we walk in faith, in the revelation of the scripture, just like this, nothing by enemies can hurt us. Amen. This is not the exclusive preserve of pastors. It is not the right of prophets. It belongs to every child of God. Nothing. He said, I give unto you power. That's, that's right. That's right. I give unto you power. Believers need to walk in the light of this victory. 
This is what Jesus is saying here. Fight the battles of your life. Many believers, we are too, we are too molestable. We are too relaxed. And all you are asking for a pastor to come and lay hands on me, that's not how it works. Resist the devil over your life. It must be a part of your daily prayers. Yeah. You must make it a part of your daily prayers to defend your territory. To ensure that the devil cannot come close to your children. To ensure that everyone who is associated with the grace that you carry is shielded from the devil. Some of my sons in the Lord and their daughters in the Lord sometimes call me and say, Pastor, I was asleep and I saw something running after me. And all of a sudden you appeared. And when you appeared, of course that was not me. That was God appearing through me because I'm his servant. I'm his servant. And I am one of those preachers that believe so much in the power of God. I believe that the power of God did not end with the disciples of old in the Bible. I believe the power of God did not end, end with Paul the Apostle. We still have the power of God today. So I say, so what happened when I appeared? They say, immediately you appeared, the devil just ran away. The thing running after me just ran away. They have to run away because as soon as they hear of me, they must obey me. They must obey me. You know, the other day I saw myself in a dream. And uh, in that dream, there was uh, in front of me, you know, the, 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 this evil thing just ap appeared. I didn't know what it was. It just appeared, but it was clear in that dream that this was demonic, this was evil. And I didn't know what to do. And it was coming to me with fury, with violence, definitely to hit me up. And right in that dream, while I was asleep, I was in a dream, I raised my left hand. And I didn't know why I raised that left hand in my dream, but as it were, fireball came from nowhere into my left hand and I threw it at them and that granted me victory. You see, what you are doing when you are awake will determine what happens to you when you are asleep. If you are too, too, too gentle, too molestable, pleading with the devil, you know, some believers, then Satan leave me alone now. Why are you doing this to me, Satan? Uh, what was the problem with you? What did I do to you? After all, I left you, I, I, I have not touched you. No, you don't do that to the devil. If you do like that, if you occupied one room before it will take over your house, you are to resist the devil. You are to say, Satan, no more you can't go there there are people who have strange dreams you are watching me today every time you close your eyes a strange dream to strange deep declare seven days of resisting the devil every midnight 12 midnight wake now somebody says why why midnight oh, well there's a mystery of the night that's when they do their things wake up 12 midnight for 30 minutes blasting tongue for 30 minutes throw arrows strange arrows at the devil go and sleep and see the masquerade that will come and pursue you it's not yet born no there are people who are having unusual level of poverty in their lives now i do know that poverty is the natural consequence of ignoring the gift of god in your life i do know that Poverty could mean that you have not gathered enough financial knowledge to be able to push you ahead. But this one we're talking about is not natural. Now he has degree, he's hard working, he reads a lot. It's just that everything he does is not working. Ah, you may need to pray. The devil may be standing by your right hand. You remember that priest in Zechariah? The devil was by, was by his hand and he didn't know. Everything he did did not prosper, it was terrible until the Lord opened his eyes. I pray the Lord will open your eyes and you'll be able to see the kind of battle you may be in and the Lord will give you wisdom to know how to handle the battles of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. For sometimes, sometimes it's some people they just have this strange feeling of some presence around them. You know, they are in a room alone. It's clear they are alone, but all of a sudden, very strangely, it's been like something just passed. 
and they are always afraid they live in fear because of the presence of some strange beings showing up here and there after them if they're in nigeria they will feel it if they go to america they will feel it they they, they are carriers of strange presences in the name of jesus if you're watching me this evening and you are like that i rebuke that presence and that strange personality that is following you around in the name of jesus i command that you are disconnected from them and you will not see them again in jesus name resist the devil if anything will follow you at all can't you know what you know from the bible it says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life say with me in the name of jesus i do not permit any demonic personality from following me around say in the name of jesus goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life say amen to that you have to be brutal the devil is brutal you have to be brutal and you know they brought a child to jesus i'm rounding up now they brought a child to jesus this boy was sick he was terribly sick and the father was like this is how he does it will throw him into fire it will throw it was messing up the destiny of the boy all the father saw was the manifestation if he had taken him to a doctor the doctor would have seen some they would call it some strange names you know doctors and they are trained to give strange names names that will make the sickness bigger than what it is but jesus saw what was causing the manifestation and the moment jesus rebuked the spirit it left and when the spirit left the manifestation the evil manifestation stopped there's some of you watching me today you are misbehaving the spirit the spirit of error all around you in the name of jesus may that spirit leave you fighting the battles of your life there are some of you the lord has spoken to you that in this season you should not go to some places obey what the lord has said there are some of you sometimes you want to help some people you want to give them money and the lord says don't give them you say in the name of jesus i sanctify this money as i give you now can sanctification of money replace the commandment of god that's why you are always in problem because you won't hear you are not obedient and lack of obedience disobedience will always always put you in problem Starting today, the Lord will give you wisdom to know the battles you should avoid and to know the battles you should fight. And as he helps you, as he helps you to choose the battles to fight, you will fight the good fight of faith. What should you use? Number one is the name of Jesus. We saw in Luke chapter 10, the disciples said, even the devils were subject unto us through thy name. The name of Jesus is a potent weapon for a believer. Every time you see a situation, point at it and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you. Sometimes you don't even need to finish the prayer. They understand in the name of Jesus. They understand that when you approach them in the name of Jesus, you are not coming with a friendly approach. So the moment they hear in the name of Jesus, they take off. Don't allow the name of Jesus to be too scarce in your mouth. You know, there are sometimes believers pray, Father, I ask that you bless me. I ask that you do this. Thank you, Father. And that's the end of the prayer. You, you, you have typed an email. You forgot to press send. <laughs> the way to make it happen is the name of Jesus. Every time something comes up, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They said, even the devils were subject to us through thy name. Believers, let's learn how to use the name of Jesus. Number two, the blood of Jesus. And they overcame him by the blood. And then by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. It's, it's a secret of overcoming. It's a secret of, secret of victory. You can win a lot more battles if you learn the blood. You can plead the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. You can plead the blood. 
and then symbolically you can drink the blood of course i say symbolically because jesus christ when he was given the holy communion he said take drink this is my blood this is my blood so symbolically that is the blood of jesus christ and they overcome it overcame it by the blood so you plead the blood and then you can symbolically drink the blood the believers is the only communion i don't care about that well jesus cared about it jesus cared about it he said do this in remembrance of me so if you understand how powerful the blood is you will partake of the only communion regularly number three if you read in ephesians chapter six you will see a whole list of weapons there i'm going to pick the breastplate of righteousness the breastplate of righteousness it says to us uh, if you are reading ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 to 18 it said put on the whole armor of god put on the whole armor of god it won't drop on you you put it on and then it talks about the breastplate of righteousness now if you keep yourself the wicked one will not be able to touch you the righteous keepeth himself and the wicked one touches him not so the breastplate of righteousness is one of the weapons we use you know the the, the, the prophet was speaking and they said he has not beheld iniquity in jacob that's right so because he has not beheld iniquity in jacob he is um, he, he, he is not cursable you can't curse him you can't do anything against him there are people that will fall for your sake when you have the breastplate of righteousness on you that's right in this season we are getting into you will need to be fully loaded he will permeate everywhere but you are getting to a season of your life where he that touches you touches the apple of god's eye and anyone who attempts your life your family your children they will go down for your sake he said he rebukes king for their sakes the, the scriptures i'm quoting to you show that with the breastplate of righteousness in place it's not just a defense mechanism it, it ricochets when a bullet hits your breastplate it goes back to the sender it goes back to the sender and that's why many times when many people call our name in their coven fire response many of them they can't survive it they can't survive it and i pray for you that in the name of jesus as you put on the breastplate of righteousness everyone who attempts to attack you the lord will attack them Amen. anyone who calls your name for evil evil shall befall them Amen. in the name of jesus christ this is the right of the children of god you will do your part and as you win battles every day victory becomes your portion you go scot free you live the life god has designed for you to live and you arise in life with a destiny that is both colorful and brilliant i see the lord blessing you in this season i'm challenging you let's pick up our weapons of war let's speak over our destinies let's let's rebuke the devil wherever he's showing up you see when we have pandemics like this or it doesn't even have to be a global pandemic when you just have a situation that is negative natural situation but negative the devil wants to hijack that situation to attack people and we have a global pandemic that's already very negative i am pretty sure from what i know about spiritual warfare the devil will be looking for loopholes to attack people in this season because he knows that you you will always call everything covid 19. you will call everything coronavirus so it will be attacking people and people will be saying it's coronavirus it's coronavirus sorry child of god not everything is coronavirus when you sleep in the night and you you see a bad thing that's not coronavirus the devil is trying to attack you and you must resist him amen 
as you resist the devil you will have testimonies as you resist the devil victory will be your portion in the precious name of jesus christ i pray for you and for all your family members you will not see evil and where you have been defeated before now receive strength to go and win that scenario will come back but instead of losing you will have the victory you will not be defeated again in the name of jesus christ i pray you will receive strength to resist the devil in the name of jesus amen hallelujah let's just pray for a few seconds i want you to say in the name of jesus, in the name of jesus i resist the devil, resist the devil over my life over my, over my family over my children i want everyone I, your children watching everyone i want you to say in the name of jesus christ I resist the devil over my life, over my business, in my family, over my health, over my progress. I resist the devil and I demand that you take your leave. Leave me alone. Leave my life alone. I resist you now in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. If you want to give your life to Jesus, wherever it is you are, we knew you over there. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus. I see myself as a sinner. I invite you into my heart. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart to stay. I believe in my heart that you died for me. I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen.